Hi everyone, you've chosen a very special day to join us. We're here with the founder and CEO of Dash. Thanks so much for joining us, Phil. Thanks, Jenna. So I want to start out, Phil, with you telling me how you had an idea a few years ago and you started it out on your bike. I don't want to give anyone hints of what you're doing because it's a pretty amazing story. <laughs> sure. So I started it out of Boston College uh, in 2009 on my bicycle in the North End, which is the Italian neighborhood of Boston. Um, started doing bicycles, uh, bicycle deliveries right from the start, a uh, number of deliveries per day. Basically grew the business from there and uh, today we're in six cities um, with over 700 restaurants and over 100 drivers on staff. So now so you guys are on, on Inks list, the fastest list growing company, but it wasn't always like that. Can we go back to the early days? Because you've said, Phil, that when someone says no in the sales world, it typically just means not yet. In the beginning, you get a lot of no's. So Absolutely. how did you scale the business? Sure. So that's a very common response when we're um, trying to sign up new restaurants in the beginning. Um, but it all comes down to persistence. As I said, no means not yet. So there were uh, a lot of people who weren't bought into the concept or didn't, uh, weren't comfortable with signing on with us yet. Um, but the key is to find a, a couple of restaurateurs that do um, see the value in it, do believe in, in what we're offering. Uh, so I was able to kind of pinpoint those um, restaurateurs and then show them what kind of service we offered and then use them as excellent testimonials and references to further expand the business. So once you approach someone, they say no, when is the right time to reach back out? Well, it depends on the business, obviously, and, and the context. But um, in our case, you know, we'll, we'll check in every month or two or three months at most um, and basically get a sense of, of where they stand, what's changed, um, you know, what, what's a good follow-up point for them and, and what the next move is um, and make sure that they're, they're comfortable with it as well. So there's really no specific time period. It's based on the company. It's totally based on the company and the context. Great. So you started Dashville before a lot of these delivery services came into fruition. How are you remaining competitive? Execution. Uh, number one is, is our execution. We continue to have the fastest delivery times in the industry, which from the, um, from the get-go was always um, our core kind of competency. So we continue to invest to make sure that we, we are the leader in terms of delivery times and speed. And um, there, there is a lot of competition, as you've mentioned, but we've been able to remain um, competitive by, um, by executing better. And one of the ways you've done that, right, is keeping that niche market of the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And you guys, like you said, you just scaled to New Haven and it's been great so far. When mm -hmm. is the right time to expand? Well, it depends, again, on the, um, the, the company and uh, what industry you're in. Uh, but for us, it's, uh, we track very closely our delivery times. Uh, we track very closely, you know, guest comments, um, issues, and feedback. And we won't open up a new market until we're 100% confident in the in the speed and the service we're offering. So for us, you know, there are different paths for every company, but we um, we take it one market at a time. I'm very hands-on, very meticulous, and I make sure that we are um, in a very good spot before moving to a new market. So you've said how you're hands-on and meticulous just now, Phil. And one of the things you've written about before is setting small goals for your big goals. How mm -hmm. do you do that? Well, I start off by looking at the, the larger picture, right? I'm, I'm very much fueled by the, the, great, um, the, the greater goal, the big goal. Um, that keeps me um, excited and up at night. Uh, but I think to get there, it's critical to set smaller milestones. So while I always start with uh, the kind of big picture of where we're expanding to next, for example, I'll put in specific milestones of where I want to be at the end of the week one, week two, week three, um, to keep myself and the team accountable and on track, uh, but also always keeping in mind that we're working towards something greater. And so you said you do that to keep yourself on track, but also your team. What's your best way, because you guys have a huge team now, of keeping everyone in the know? Communication, for sure, uh, and transparency. Uh, it's very important to, be, um, to have open communication throughout the company. Uh, we have you know, all hands on deck weekly meetings where anybody can call in, Skype in, um, use Google Voice, whatever it may be, whatever your form is. Uh, but basically, um, being across six different cities, it's very important to take advantage of, of that kind of communication, uh, but also remaining you know, in person uh, as much as we can, getting together as a team in person um, to kind of review what, where we are, uh, how we're doing, where our challenges are. But I would say the number one key to that is, is communication. So when you are together or someone's calling in via Google Voice, how do you lead that meeting? 
uh, again, with transparency. Um, we have a couple of key metrics we look at every week, and I think um, accountability on uh, the individual manager perspective is crucial. Um, so I want my managers to take pride in the, in the service and the speed we're offering, whether it's in New Haven or Baltimore. Um, so w it is our job as a company and my job to provide the, the resources, the support um, to do that. But ultimately, uh, I think the accountability of the manager to take real responsibility over the success or challenges or failures uh, that we can learn from in the market uh, is number one. So uh, I go around the, the to the operational managers uh, with this with the support of my other top managers and we'll basically um, you know review what, what how we did in the past week each person has an opportunity to present how they did how they scored on key metrics and where they feel the biggest opportunities for improvement are great so like you said from the beginning it started with you at Boston College on your bike and then every time you couldn't do the 10 to 15 deliveries a night you'd bring someone else on now right. you have 90 employees so of course the company has changed Right. How are you, what are the two most important things you do as a CEO to maintain the culture? I think it's um, leading by example, um, and not just, that's not just me, that's a, it's more so the managers and, and um, the top people in the company. Number one thing is to, um, to, to do uh, what you say you're going to do, to, um, to actually follow through and to, again, lead by example. So, uh, again, I, I'm not saying that's uh, entirely me, that's really um, uh, you know, a product of the great people I have on board. Um, but I think showing uh, people, you know, what we expect um, and leading by example is the first thing. Number two is never be afraid to get your hands dirty, to roll up your sleeves and do what you need to do. I still sign up restaurants. I still do deliveries. I still take customer service calls. I expect anybody at any level in the company to do so uh, because I wouldn't ask somebody to do something that I haven't done myself uh, because I want to understand what goes into the role how uh, a person can best see success in that role, what challenges they face. But if I haven't done it firsthand, then uh, I feel like I'm, I'm very much in the dark. So I think that's a, a very um, d distinguishing factor in our company that we all embrace. How about for your managers? How do you train them and bring them on? We have a wide range of managers, um, young managers from you know uh, 21 uh, all the way up to um, to much older. But... It, we're entirely based on on results and um, you know your kind of passion for what we do, uh, and that is you know do you enjoy bringing food uh, and that convenience of delivery to customers in the, in these cities? Um, so kind of having a passion for the convenience of delivery and, and enjoying good food and a passion for what we do is far more important than experience in a kind of logistics company and operations um, things like that. And then uh, from there, you know, if you have that kind of passion and motivation, uh, we, we see that the most success is um, just in training and developing a mentorship along the way. Great. And I know one of the things you really look for when you're hiring people, whether they're a manager or someone who's going to be doing the delivery, is values. You said everything else can be taught, but values can cannot. And I definitely mm -hmm. agree with that. When you first started, you had very little people to hire. Now you're hiring at scale. What's the one question you ask in every interview that you know is going to indicate someone's character? The one question I always ask is, what single project or task um, would you consider your proudest accomplishment in your career? And this is straight off of Inc.com. It's not an original question, but it's the question that I found to be the most revealing um, in the interview process. From there, once I understand what they're proudest of, it gives me a sense of their character and I can dive into specifics. You know, what went into that, uh, that project to make it a success? What were the challenges? What did you enjoy? What did you hate about it? Um, and basically dive into a very specific kind of project or task that they feel most proud of. So what are some things you want to hear in that response then? I want to hear passion. I want to hear um, excitement about um, what, what went into that. I want to hear about the impact, the results, but I also want to hear, you know, what drove them nuts during it. Uh, I want to hear about how they interacted and communicated and collaborated with other team members because that's that's critical. Um, and of course, the different challenges along the way. Uh, but I really listen for a kind of hunger and a drive and a passion uh, throughout that process in order to uh, achieve the goal. Because look, we'll always have challenges along the way. There will always be obstacles and things to knock us down. But um, the way we respond to them is is the most important thing, and that's that's what I listen to in an interview like that. Great. And then once you bring them on, I know you're big on written communication. Why is that so important? I'm sorry. What kind of communication? Written communication. Written communication. 
I think it's important to have a, uh, a documentation or a log of everything that was that was said. So when we do meetings, you know, we'll follow up with with meeting uh, minutes and notes and summaries. And it's not to 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 say that people won't um, won't follow through. It, it's just a way to keep everybody accountable. I think it's it's hard to recall what you what you say just over a phone call or in person. So when you have specific bullet points of what was said and most importantly what everybody will do and the next action steps, it makes it very very easy for us to go back and say, well, this was gonna we were gonna do this by this date. Where are we in this process? Um, so I think it just provides a good precedent and um, and kind of milestone for us to to easily fall back on and and um, get a sense of the progress we're making. Great. And one of the things that you were sharing with the beginning of the meetings, you have people call in from each of your cities. Correct. Because you don't have a company where everybody's in one place, how do you manage culture to make everybody feel welcome when they're not all coming into the same office? It starts with the individual city manager, for sure. Um, and, and they need to really represent the values of Dashed and um, the, the kind of commitment to speed and service to our guests uh, because to the, the carriers that we have um, in, in Providence, in Baltimore, uh, in Philadelphia, they're first and foremost, you know, reporting into this, this manager. So uh, the manager is providing the experience to them locally. Uh, they're providing the dashed kind of experience. And um, they, they need to, again, lead by example. Great. So one of the things that you really pointed out in one of your blogs was that balance is meaning that you're average at everything. And I never really thought of it that way, and it's a great way to put it. How do you make sure that you're evaluating your strengths and your weaknesses and just doing what you're really great at? Well, the first step is, is knowing what that is, right? Identifying it, saying, I'm going to be exceptional at this. Uh, from there, it's, it's asking the question, how am I going to measure how successful I am at this? Um, so we're very clear about that at Dashed, and, and I'm very clear about that personally. If I have a goal that I'm going to set um, and something that I'm going to focus on improving, um, I need to have a, a, a concrete way to measure it. Um, so I think making sure that you're constantly kind of evaluating how you're doing along the way uh, is really important um, to reach that goal. But uh, I think it's, it's, it definitely goes back to... Um, just a kind of laser focus on doing one thing really well, um, because otherwise you may do um, may do many things and you may do them adequately or even above average. Uh, but to stand out in, in this marketplace, you need to really excel in one area. So once you do that and you say, okay, I'm great at this, not so good at you know product management, you're going to delegate that task. How do you make sure right. that the task that you delegate is done in the way into the standard that you want it done? I think uh, being very clear about your kind of um, objectives from the start with that uh, delegation is, is very important. Um, so putting the time in up front with that person um, to make it clear that this may not be something I enjoy, it may not be you know, my, my number one strength, um, but going to them and really having a, um, putting the time in, the, the investment up front, a kind of thorough understanding of what you expect in the role. That's the only way you're going to set up that person for success is with clear and, and, and thorough expectations for them. And then once you do that, when is the right time to follow up with them to see how you know whatever project is going? I always start off on a more frequent interval to start because you can always scale it back. Um, but to begin, I think a weekly meeting is, is, is very important. Um, even if it's just a few minutes just to check in, everything's going well this week, I have no, um, no questions, there's nothing I need from you, Phil, that's fine. At least we had the opportunity to chat and, and check in. Um, from there, if you find that you're doing that every, every week, then perhaps you go every two weeks or even monthly. But I think um, start off with, um, with more frequent um, kind of uh, check-ins to see how everything's going. I mean, it's clear that this mentality is really leading to your growth because like we mentioned at the beginning, you guys were named 119 on Inc.'s fastest growing company and number seven in Massachusetts. So first, congratulations on that because it's Thank an you. incredible story. We're but very second, grateful. Thank you. how are you going to continue to scale and keep your eyes on getting bigger? I think, again, it's, it's making sure that we continue to um, bring our delivery times down, continue to bring on the best restaurants in our space. Uh, and that's what's worked um, for us uh, very well over the past five and a half years. And uh, that's what I see, you know, our focus will, will remain over the, the next few years as well. So when we catch up this time in 2015, where do you want to be? Where do you want to be doing? 
by then we'll be in several more markets, although um, not in um, not in dozens of markets. Again, you know, we're going to do it responsibly, sustainably, and make sure we're uh, we're doing it in a way that um, is still providing the kind of signature level of service that we need to in order to expand. Uh, but by that point, I think we'll be um, have uh, an, an, a considerable amount of new cities under our belt, and uh, and be really happy to be there as well. Well, we'll hold you to San Diego first. You know, it's a little <laughs> bit far from the Northeast. Can you let people know how they can start using Dashed? Absolutely. So uh, Dashed uh, restaurants and all of Dashed is found exclusively on foodler.com. So you can log on to foodler.com or you can download the Foodler app on uh, iPhone, Android, or iPad and browse uh, thousands of restaurants. The restaurants that normally don't do delivery, Pinkberry, P.F. Chang's, Maggiano's, and top-rated local restaurants are all listed on Foodler, so that's where you can find us. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us, Phil. Thanks for having me, Jen. I appreciate it.